Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Concha Monge, and I work in the University Carlos III of Madrid in Spain. And I am also a member of the Robocom Plus Plus project. Uh, and my expertise in, is in soft robotics. Uh, I really consider soft robotics as a new paradigm, uh, bringing new robots into the robotics scene. And uh, with robots which are softer, more adaptable, more robust, for uh, the uh, performance of uh, specific tasks, right? And also uh, with a great potential to uh, make the uh, current uh, robotics evolve into something more powerful. So uh, my contribution uh, to this uh, European project, Robocom++, is about the fractional order control of soft robotics links and uh, more specifically links which are going to be integrated in a, in a humanoid robot. Mm -hmm. So this is my presentation. I will go very briefly through the different uh, topics, the objectives, the, the platform we are uh, using uh, as a soft neck, the model of the platform, the control of the platform and also the experimental results. Um, so the, the, the main ob objectives uh, we have been dealing with are, first of all, to design uh, a soft link acting as the neck of the human robot tail that we have in the, in the lab. And once we have the, the, the design, uh, we have prototyped, uh, prototyped the, the neck, we have modeled and controlled the real neck. This is the, the objective of the uh, work. So, uh, for sure, uh, the problem when, de when dealing with soft robots is that the model is strongly uh, complex, um, very, very, very complex, non-linear, and uh, it is usual um, that uh, you have to deal with mismatches, right? So, we simplify the model very strongly, and uh, later we deal with uncertainties and model mismatches, using a very robust uh, control S strategy based on fractional order controllers that I will introduce later. So this is the topic of the presentation. Um, regarding the platform, here you have a picture. This is a quite simple one um, in which you can see this soft link here, which is uh, made of a uh, Ninja Flex uh, material, right? with a 3D printer and we have the top base and also we have the, 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 or the top platform and we have the fixed base, right? So we have three tendons which are actuated with three motors, right? So uh, controlling the angular position of each motor, we uh, control, we change the length of each tendon and then uh, we finally can achieve a particular orientation and inclination of the neck of the mobile platform. This is how it works, right? So here we have a quite nonlinear model uh, because we have nonlinear materials. We have also the, 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 the fact that we want to load the top of the neck with different masses and we have to face uh, with the model uncertainties or model mismatches that the new masses uh, uh, cause uh, to the system, right? And also we have a gravity effect. So we need finally a robust control S strategy to face with this. Because from the modeling part, we are simplifying the process a lot. Hmm? We will see now uh, more specifically uh, how we achieve the model. So this is the configuration of the mechanism. Uh, you can see here that we can achieve the angle theta s, which is the orientation of the neck, and also the angle theta p, which is the inclination of the neck. Uh, and we achieve that acting on the tendons through the motors, right? Um, so uh, the, the final problem is solved through inverse kinematics. So if I want to orientate and inclinate the neck a particular amount of angle, right? Uh, what we do applying inverse kinematics is, okay, let's obtain the final length uh, for each tendon so that that inclination and that orientation is achieved. And this is what we do. And in here in these figures, you can see 
how the different lengths for each cable L1, L2 and L3 can be obtained when fixing particular inclinations and orientations, right? So once we have the length, what we have to obtain is the angular position of each motor so that that length is achieved. But this transference or this model connecting the, the length or relating the length of the cable and the angular position of each motor is easy to estimate. So finally, um, with this simple inverse kinematics model, we can finally achieve the, um, the amount of angle for each motor to be mo moved, right? And this in combination with the rest of the motors, right, uh, allows me, this allows me to achieve the final inclination and orientation. So finally, the control problem uh, focuses on controlling angular positions of the motors, right? Whose transfer function uh, are like this? Transfer functions of a second order uh, and uh, very, very, uh, very easy, right? Uh, to obtain and to control. Hmm? So this is the approach. We have simplified it a lot, right? But it works as you will see later. So I agree that uh, we have followed a lot of assumptions and, and which are necessary to really simplify the model and, and finally uh, being able to design a controller in an easy way, right? Uh, the main assumptions are here in this slide, the stiffness property of the pin are considered isotropic and linear elastic. For instance, the tendons are inelastic. Uh, there is no dynamic effects of the pin, but only of T uh, motors, only the actuator dynamics remains, right? And in order to linearize the, the system, the dynamics of the system, we assume that the beam deforms with a constant curvature. So finally, the thing is that the only two angles to be considered are, are the, 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 or, the orientation and the inclination, theta s and theta p. And applying the inverse kinematics, we can obtain each angular position for each motor. And controlling the motors, I control the final pose of the neck. This is the summary, right? So um, in order to obtain the, the model of the complete neck, uh, what we do is to excite uh, with a step input, which is an inclination for the neck. Um, we excite the neck with that input, step input. Uh, the magnitude is the inclination. And we measure the real inclination achieved through uh, the uh, use of an, uh, an inertial measurement unit. So using the IMO, we can measure the real position, the real inclination, when we excite the neck uh, with a particular step, inclination step, right? So with that, we obtain a first order system, which is the one we have here in the, in the, in the slide, with K equal to around one and T equal to 0.0. .0. 55 uh, seconds, right? So we can model uh, the neck like that. This is the bow diagram. This is the step response of this first order system, which is the model of our system. And now for this system, we design the controller, right? Okay, so what is the control strategy? Well, the controller we are looking for has to achieve three main design specifications or control specifications. Um, there is a main one, which is the, uh, the, the fact that we need the controller to face uh, uncertainties, model uncertainties, that we for sure have, because we have strongly simplified the, the model of the, of the model. Um, and, the, and, and apart from that, from the strong simplification we have applied, there is another, another uh, important issue that we have to, to deal with, which is the fact that we want to place different loads on the neck, right? On the top of the neck. So we have measured that the main parameter in the model affected by changes of the, of the masses on the top is the gain of the system. But that thing is also affected by how you root the tendons in the system. 
Okay. And also the rap rapid prototyping is also affecting mainly the gain of the system. When, when, when we measure the new model, uh, changing, for instance, the tender routine or the masses, or why not uh, changing a little bit uh, uh, the final model obtained through rapid prototyping, we have measured and compared and, and we have determined that the gain is the main parameter affected by that. So we want a control, a controller, which is robust to gain changes, okay, plant gain changes. And um, so we have selected three main different uh, control specifications, which are the main, the two main ones, the two first ones are very typical ones, which are the phase margin and the gain growth of a frequency. With these two, I can select the speed of the system and I can select the overshoot of the system. But then we added this third one, which is to guarantee uh, the robustness to mass changes on the top. And this works as follows. Um, we want the controller uh, to be connected to the plant so that the open loop can guarantee a flat phase around the gain growth of a frequency. If, if the phase is flat around the gain growth of a frequency, if I change the gain of the system, the phase margin keeps the same, right? And then if the phase margin keeps uh, the same, the overshoot of the system keeps the same. This is the procedure. This is the uh, advantage of using this uh, constraint, right? So it means that changing masses, that implies changing gains in the system, will not affect the overshoot. And finally, the responses will be maybe faster or slower, but with the same overshoot. This is the robustness uh, I am speaking about. So we have three design specifications, so three control specifications. Then I need a controller with three parameters, right? So um, the three parameters uh, comes from a fractional order PI controller, um, which is a, uh, like a usual controller, PI controller, but, but look at the fact that the derivative or the integration has not integral order, but fractional order, for instance, 0 0.30 something, or, or as in this case, an order of 0 0.89, okay? So this is fractional order control. We generalize the orders of the derivatives and integrators in a conventional PID controller. For sure, we can also use uh, different versions of this type of control, PI, PD, PID, okay? So in this case, to fulfill these three uh, specifications, we have three parameters um, coming from a PI controller, and the three parameters are this KP value, this KI value, and this integral value that we can see in the slide. This is an integral value because the order is negative. It means that this is a, an integrator fraction or the integrator. So if we represent the bow diagram of the system with the controller, we can see that around one radians per second, which is my specification, I am achieving zero decibels, and the phase is flat. So this is translated into having a constant overshoot in the time responses, as you can see here in close loop, um, when I change the mass of the system, when I change the gain of the system. So this is how we achieve the control uh, purpose, no? the control uh, requirements. So here in this video, you can see how it works. Um, we have the neck, um, and this neck uh, is loaded initially with, with no mass at the top. There is no mass here. And we always use the same inclination, which is 15 degrees. And we change the orientation from zero degrees in a steps of 22.5 degrees up to 90 degrees. So you can see how from zero orientation to 90 degrees orientation, different uh, steps of inclinations are achieved. Inclinations of 15 degrees, okay? And we do the same for each of the masses we are adding. And you can see here, for instance, after, uh, after zero grams, we apply a mass of uh, 100 grams, which is coming now. Look at the, at the video. Here we are now 
updating uh, the, the test with a new mass, which is 100 grains, right? And we repeat the, uh, the test. Different orientations, and for each orientation, an inclination of 15 degrees. So you can see how the behavior is quite robust. There is practically no difference in the behavior um, even if a new mass has been added. And we repeat that up to masses of 500, uh, five, sorry, five, yes, 500 grains, as you can see here. I will show you now the performance with five grain, 500 grains of mass. You can see the performance is quite, quite correct. So these are the results. You can see how the overshoot keeps more or less the same. We achieve always the same inclination with the different orientations, okay? So these are uh, the main achievements. Um, here you can see the control signals for each of the motors uh, for the different payloads. And we are achieving uh, uh, the constraints uh, working in the working range of each motor with no saturation and uh, with totally feasible signals, control signals, right? Um, we have integrated the, the soft in, in the, the humanoid robot tail. Here you can see a video of that. And uh, um, this is working very, very correctly. We have uh, adapted and scaled the, the, the final platform to be integrated in tail. And here you can see how it works. Uh, it's working correctly, uh, but not um, commanded from outside the robot, but uh, with the ROS architecture of the robot. Mm -hmm. So everything is integrated, not only from the hardware perspective, but also for, from the software perspective using ROS, mm -hmm. the robotic uh, robot operative system. Mm -hmm. And finally, I would like to show you these new advances we are um, having, we're replacing the DC motors by also soft actuators like uh, shape memory alloys actuators, right? SMAs. Uh, in this video, you can see how uh, uh, the platform works uh, using SMA. So you can see here that there, there, there are no motors uh, and they have been replaced by SMAs, okay? Um, the results are promising. We still have to deal with some problems because these uh, definitely this type of um, this type of um, uh, actuators are extremely nonlinear and uh, they actuate through currents uh, that we apply, heating uh, the the alloys and so on. So there are certain problems when when using this type of uh, actuators, but we are confident that we can face them and that we can uh, have very good results in, in, in the future. And uh, finally, to conclude, um, uh, I would like to summarize a little bit uh, this presentation. Um, this work uh, reports on, on a model-based approach uh, to control the position of, tendon, of a tendon-driven system, which is the neck of our humanoid robot tail. Um, the system is complex, but we have strongly simplified the model and we have designed a fraction of all the controllers to face uh, nonlinearities, uh, model uncertainties, mismatches, etc. And the, the results are quite, quite promising. And the final soft has, has been integrated in tail. And in future works, we would like to focus on the generalization of this design approach to be used as a soft arm for the robot. So uh, using these as an arm uh, implies uh, very challenging uh, uh, objectives uh, because we have to face a very, very complex nonlinear dynamics and, and property effects and so on. But we hope uh, to, to, uh, to have the, the new prototype ready in the following weeks. And that's all from my side. Uh, I would like to thank all the partners in this project for the amazing experience sharing knowledge um, and for, for the support uh, when it comes to uh, giving us the opportunity uh, to collaborate uh, in soft robotics. So thank you very much to all the 
um, principal investigators and other uh, researchers uh, working on, on the project. Thank you.